Donald Trump, Tesla, and Colt all in the news this week, and they've all screwed it up. You'd think, after a while, they'd catch on. Welcome to the FWAT Show on the Coil Entertainment Network. I'm Rob Steele. That's Jesus Jones in the background. And so I was looking back at when Donald Trump addressed the United Nations last week. And he said his administration was better than anyone else's and everyone had a good laugh at him. Now, Trump didn't realize they were laughing at him and not with him, but that's to be expected from the Nimrod. What I should have expected, though, was Fox News' coverage, where they edited out the laughter. Behold, the news that doth be fake. Yeah, if you edit it, it doesn't count. Twits. News of the week that makes a very little sense. Granted, a lot of the stuff on the show is not going to make sense this week. Be forewarned. News this week from Tesla, who I think is a magnificent company, and if they want to send me a car, feel free. And yet, Tesla chairman Elon Musk has to step down from his position as chairman, but he'll remain the CEO. Now, Tesla and Musk must each pay separate $20 million fines to the SEC because of a tweet. That's right, a tweet. Came from Elon Musk himself, who said something about buying back the company and making it private. And that made the SEC go, oh, you can't do it. By the way, it's Securities and Exchange Commission, not the Southeastern Conference. I realize football is going on, but they really should have separate acronyms. Just a thing. I'll go back to the story. If this can happen because of a tweet, why the ever-loving fuck has nothing happened to Donald Trump yet? Seriously, how many tweets does he have to do before, you know what, let's let's go on to something else even a little bit, slightly. Don't impeach him. Don't impeach Donald Trump. Arrest him. He has done so much that he is arrestable that it's, it's insane. And he can't do the job from jail, so he's effectively fired. Meaning, we can rebuild the country starting now. Granted, we can't do it with Pence, who really should be in the same cell. Because both of them, big jackasses. I'm just saying. I'd like someone who's a bit more consistent, a bit more stable, a bit more reliable. How about Chris Davis? Do you know Chris Davis? He's an outfielder for the Oakland A's. Now, while he did hit 48 home runs this year, which is a career high for him, it's a spectacular thing, good for him, his batting average is only 247. The reason I bring this up as consistent and why it ties into everything else is it's been 247 for the past four years. Do you know how hard it is to get a successful base hit 24.7% of the time? in four consecutive seasons. I mean, that's just weird, isn't it? It's also the only way I could figure out how to work it into the show. Congratulations, Chris. There's a post circulating on Facebook showing a picture about how the company Colt won a $57 million contract for M4 carbides. Carbines. Carmines? Guns, M4 guns, whatever. Now, I had initially passed on doing anything with this story until my friend and show listener, Garrett, was up, dude, pointed out the issue. Now, Garrett is a veteran who knows his guns, and he pointed out a couple things that are wrong with the pick, and I'll try to explain them in non-gun person terms. The magazine, which is the thingy that holds the bullets, it's covered in blue tape. And that blue tape is supposed to be the label that means this magazine shoots blanks. Well, if it shoots blanks, then if we go back to the picture, what is that coming out of the end of the barrel? I'm just saying. Well, it's a cartridge. A cartridge. It's not a bullet. It's clearly not a bullet. It's the thing that holds the bullet in the magazine, you know, where they put the bullet and the gunpowder and the wadding and packing and whatever else they put in a bullet these days. I don't know. I'll ask Garrett and get back to you. 
So you got a blue taped mag for blanks and it's stuck in an expended shell in the flash suppressor, the silencer. So they can make a cool looking picture. Oh look! More fake news brought to you by the NRA. Or Colt. Or whoever made the picture in the first place and faked the whole thing. And here, I thought it was just about bullets. Every so often, you get one of those stories where you read it and you know there's something just a little bit wrong about it. And it takes a little while for you to go, oh yeah, that's it. Let me read you this story that came out on CNN this Monday. A group of Southern California high school students faced disciplinary action after spelling out the N-word with t-shirts at a senior picnic. The Escondido Union High School District this week confirmed that about 10 students at a senior event made a poor decision by participating in... Uh, wait, see, it clicked for me. That's when it clicked. They spelled out the N-word. That's not a good thing. I get that. It took 10 of them to do it. Now, this struck me as odd because I don't know what the 10 letter N word is. I know the six letter N word and I'm, I'm not saying it, but what's the 10? I don't know what the 10 letter N word is. So I spoke with some news people and checked with some newspapers and some newsworthy sources about what the word could be and the 19th nincompoop suggested nanometer, but we quickly deemed that as not noteworthy. Narcissism was rather nonplussed. Other narratives included nationally, navigation, and neurotoxin, but most of the words just left us with numbness, so we choked it up to a bunch of high school numbskulls. However, if you happen to know the word, contact me through the website, thefwatshow.com, where there's buttons for Facebook and Twitter, an email even, send me an email with your idea of what this 10 letter N word might be. You know what? While you're on the website, click the buttons for iTunes or the Google Play Store or even YouTube where you can subscribe to the show. And while you're at it, go ahead and click on that FWAT shop button. I'm not going to mention the coffee cups or the hats anymore because they're not there. We've switched to a new store. We still have t shirts and hoodies and baseball jerseys. And posters and stickers and phone cases. Yeah, check it out. There's a lot of stuff. All of it goes to support the Coil Entertainment Network. And we thank you for your support. And I'm now going to leave you with just a bit of an odd story concerning Deadpool. That's right, the Marvel Comics anti-hero, or whatever, was shown in Utah. Which you'd think in Utah would be a sin as it is. But it isn't apparently. Now, there's a series of theaters called the Bruvy Cinema Pub, where they serve alcohol during movies. Well, you know what? During an R-rated Marvel anti-hero movie, I can see that working. Except, except their liquor license hadn't gone through yet. you think they would have learned when they showed Magic Mike 2, and they did have a license then, and they got fined the same then? But they didn't and did it again. So, U.S. District Judge David Nuffer, I didn't name him, ruled that the law was in violation of the First Amendment and should now be eliminated. And now, more than a year later, he ruled that Bruvies should not have to pay its legal fines for the case. And that the state has to reimburse Bruvies $474,455.22. The moral of the story is, don't f*** with Deadpool. Okay, if you have a better theory, let me know. In the meantime, be safe, and I'll see you next week. <laughs>